Hey everyone, my name is Sam and I have a book buying addiction. If you get to the end of this video and liked it, then give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe and the bell notification button. I mean, you've seen the title. I thought I was going to do way better in October. Like, like way better. Because I didn't have a bunch of these pre-ordered. I don't think I really impulse bought anything, to be totally honest. And a couple of these were, were gifted to me. I'll point those ones out. But like... I was honestly like there's no way I'm gonna get past 10 books this month no way so these are the books that I managed to accumulate in the month of October so first off I finally picked up Thick as Thieves by Megan Whelan Turner I finished books one two and three this is four I think right no this is book five I finished books one two three four and five um and this is the next one and then we just have to wait for book six whenever it comes out I think March 2020 was the last date I saw. Um, I This series just gets better and better with each book. It's so, I, I feel, I miss the hype of when it originally came out. They're a bit older of a series, but like, I don't know why, how it died down. Also, the new covers that they re-released this series with, beautiful. I absolutely love these covers so much. Um, and I've been waiting for the paperback. The last time I looked to pick it up, um, it was only available in hardcover. So it was finally available in paperback. It was on for like $10 on Indigo. So I picked it up finally. And along that same wavelength, wavelength of older popular fantasy series that have been re-released with new covers and like an extended, like a final book or a novella or whatever, I own book one and two of the Book of Palinor series, The Naming and The Riddle. I've only read The Naming and it blew me away and I was like, hold on. Okay, this is a series I'm going to have to pay like a hell of a lot of attention to while reading and I need to read them back to back to back. They're big epic high fantasies, which I wasn't expecting because they're not enormous books, but there's so much historical information and background put into them. It blew my mind. And the covers are insanely beautiful. So again, they went on sale for like nine dollars or something like that so i picked up book three which is the crow and if you i'll put them together on my shelf and you'll see in whatever next video um the spines make up a map and like you can see the lines on them they all connect i also picked up book four the singing this is probably my favorite cover i i don't know why but it looks like a broom and a sword to my fa my brain so i'm like oh harry potter because apparently that's what magical brooms are in my brain this is what happens when you grow up as a millennial and then I picked up, this was like the new book that I think they re-released the covers for to release with it. Um, the Bone Queen, which is like a, it's not book five. It's one of the main characters, like side stories, I believe, C Cadvan story. So I am going to probably wait until the beginning of 2020, maybe in January, or February. I think I'm going to put just the whole series on my TBR and just that's going to be my goal for the month is just to read that. And it'll probably be one of my goals for 2020 year. Um. Yeah, I'm so freaking excited that I have the books finally. I the, the I was I saw I picked up book one on impulse because it was in the bookstore and it was amazing. And then I think book two same. And then I hadn't seen the rest of the series in my bookstore, so I just kept waiting and waiting. And finally, they went on sale, so it was a sign. Then at Value Village, I picked up a couple more Madeline Rue books. So I think Asylum is the correct me if I'm wrong. Asylum is the first in the series, and then there's the book Sink. Chuary, Sanctum, sorry, and then book three, Catacomb. They're both at Value Village for like five bucks and they're, there's literally nothing wrong with them. It doesn't look like anyone ever opened them, to be totally honest. So I hadn't yet read her House of Furies book when I bought these, but I have since, and I actually really enjoyed the writing. So I'm, I feel like this could be a little bit darker than House of Furies, so I don't know when I'm going to read it, but I'm a scaredy cat. So reading this during Halloween may theme-wise add up, but I'm paranoid during Halloween, so this is probably a good one to read, like, during, during a light, fun month. Maybe I'll wait until the spring or summer. Um, and try and track down Sanctum because this reminds definitely like I can see the similarities between um, this and Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children um, books. So I hopefully I enjoy these too because I really liked House of Furies. My pre-order for this came in so freaking early. I don't even understand. Um, my copy of Get a Life Chloe Brown <laughs> showed up by Talia Hibbert. I think this is her debut as a like a professionally published author. Um, but it's black owned voices and the main character is also plus size and chronic illness rep which are not representations I think that we get in all that often. Um, so I've been delving more into the adult romance genre just because I kind of had to research it for work and then now I'm like it's it is different than I you know the optics of just shirtless guys and and holding like 
girls in Victorian dresses whereas like the more modern designs the books are changing and like the portrayal of them and the diversity in them is changing just like the Kiss Quoten got me into that Kiss Quoten was like the best book to get me into the genre because it's such a good good book um so hopefully this is is just as good I know it's a blur by Helen Huang which gives me even more hope for it um and I heard nothing but absolute praise from people who read the arc and I hope I enjoy it I'm, I'm so freaking excited to read this definitely going to be reading it in December my friend Joanne was so freaking sweet I don't I, I think she accidentally ordered um the paperback and has the hardcover of this they did a cover change um but undead girl gang by lily anderson i have tried to read it i think at least once like i got the book physically from the library and i just never got to it um i hate when books do cover changes from hardcover to paperback especially i don't understand that's just so stupid to me and i generally just like books with cover with with people on them but the person on the cover at least is a person of color which I'm all for and I like like the shadow hands and the pink and the green are like is aesthetically pleasing for me so I hope I enjoy it I know there's supposed to be like Wiccans or witches or or whatever and everyone I know that's read it has absolutely loved it so I'm not sure when I'm gonna read it honestly I have no plans at this point I don't want to say I'll wait till next October because that's like ridiculous to try and be like yeah I'll plan for a year but like Maybe that's what'll happen, who knows. I was actually planning on buying this sometime in the upcoming months, but the publisher ECW Press was just so incredibly generous and reached out to me on Instagram and DMs and said, would you like a copy? And I was like, yeah. And the author talks to me on Instagram too. She's really cool, hi Jay. Um, yeah, so I got book two, The Call of the Rift Veil. Vale. This is the sequel to Call of the Rift Flight. I think it was originally blurbed as like Avatar, The Last Airbender meets meet something else I'm totally blanking on it right now but it is definitely indigenous influences um the author herself um so I did get clarification from since I did my review on it because I had also spoken to her on Twitter since um that she herself is not indigenous and that's what I assumed she is um she does not in any way have any indigenous physical features but that doesn't mean you aren't indigenous you could just be passing light um but she explained that she is not indigenous but she did native studies and in the back in the author's note she specifies which communities that she's in interacted with so she would pull information and influences from their cultures and stories so I also we absolutely need own voices indigenous authors um but I we also need to get into this realm of people of whatever color can write diverse books with lots of different people in them and represented and unfortunately right now indigenous authors are a drop in the bucket of who's actually being published I saw somewhere that's like for every like thousand books that get like a, a publishing deal there's like 12 that are indigenous authors or something like that um that may even be a high number so we need to get authors or imprints like the Rick Riordan imprint having Rebecca Roanhorse write own voices stuff um but again too if she has that Navajo perspective we want absolutely that information but there are there's thousands of indigenous cultures um in North and South America especially so we need to be giving voices to those authors from those communities and also just including them they exist in our world where we live just like they existed in the world where this author lived when she was living in Canada so she included them um, and their cultures in this and I absolutely adored the first book it's got a lot of like climate change dystopian fl influences on it um, and based on the cover I'm assuming we're going a little bit farther north or we're going to be dealing with the other side of climate change because the first book has a lot of fires and droughts and then this looks like more winter which is very Canadian so I am so excited I think I want to try and squeeze this into my December TBR if not January when we have snow I like they say when we have snow when we've had snow since September here but whatever my copy of Grimoire Noir came to by Vera, by Vera Green Tea and Yana Bogash I I borrowed this graphic novel in September from the library this is like my most favorite graphic novel I've ever read. It's the illustrations are just jaw dropping to me. And I loved the story. Um, the just the colors and everything were so freaking beautiful. I'm hoping maybe they'll come up with something like these authors will keep doing stuff either this series or another series or whatever. I'm going to follow them because I wanted it so badly that I ordered it and my mail delivery people put in my barbecue don't ask questions that's I've just given up with our delivery people but it's here I own it in my possession and I'm probably gonna reread it every year or so around Halloween 
So in addition to The Book Thief as my favorite standalone of all time, um, Ready Player One is one of my all-time favorite standalones. That book blew me away. I don't know a ton about gaming and such. Like, I play Spyro and, like, I play games on my iPad, but I don't, you know, I'm not a part of, like, Minecraft gaming or Fortnite or anything like that. So I've been toying around with the idea of picking up Armada to read for like three years I feel like and it's just never like it's, I've never seen it at a bookstore I've never seen it in the library or anything and then when I was at Value Village I saw it for five dollars <laughs> it's hardcover there's like nothing wrong with it like nothing not like nothing and then I opened the under dust jacket and it's like a I got blueprint under and it's like oh my god that's so cool so uh for five bucks i bit the bullet and i'm gonna try it i don't know when i'm hoping the distaste of the ready player one movies don't influence me on this i know everyone that i've heard that has read both of them said ready player one is a better book that's fine i know that going in i don't know that i would necessarily compare them though as well because they're not in the same world so hopefully i'm able to differentiate them especially since it's been such a like it's been like probably a year and a half two years since I've read Ready Player One so I think I can separate the two pretty easily in my mind um they're not linked like ridiculously the way like Aurora Rising is to the Illuminae series for me for some reason I don't know but I don't know when I'll read it probably in the winter sometime but I'm very happy I own it I also got my copy of Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo at a whole thing. For, first of all, there's no way that this wasn't a hard shelf date, but they shipped my copy like a week early and I got it early. And then I opened it and like, first of all, the stickers that Indigo put on here that says Indigo exclusive are not peelable. Okay, y'all done fucked up, Indigo. If you watch this, why? Who why would you do that? You know that pisses readers off to absolutely no damn end, especially when we charge 30 to $40 for adult books in Canada, sometimes 50. Um, I shouldn't have to be fucking scraping this shit with Goo Gone, okay? Get your fucking life together. And then I also, my pre-order copy, I went and had to switch it. Um, it was a misprint on the spine. So for whatever, put, whatever machine put the foil on there, um, it cut off halfway. So like half of Basically all of Labor Dugo's name wasn't foiled and then half of ninth was gone and like I had a little bit of house and flat iron I don't think was at all um, foiled. So yeah, I also like didn't realize how amazingly pretty all of the UK covers and like the, I think it's a Lumicrate or is it Waterstones? One of the UK companies, I don't understand why they get these stunning freaking books. There's like, there's the spine. And now I literally had said that I think when I got it and I was like, oh, I was expecting like, snake skills on the spine or something like that they did that and then there was like a bluish hue to it in the uk covers why in the hell is indigo such a basic bitch like it's it's and i don't mean that in a positive way i i'm i'm, I'm separating it from like basic bitches are those ones that like pumpkin spices i'm one of those but like your company stop being such a basic bitch and get your damn life together for your exclusive books there is no reason none whatsoever when we pay almost 50 dollars a book sometimes I mean, I got this on sale, but this is $35 Canadian plus taxes normally. Um, and there's no reason why a labor Dugo book, which you know is going to be wide selling, you wouldn't put the effort in to at least for the first run have something special on them. Okay? Stop being lazy basic bitches, Indigo. Okay? That's all I'm saying. My friend Jennifer was so sweet and sent me The Witch's Kind by Louisa Morgan. She thinks I would like it. Um, so I have read A Secret History of Witches by the author. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. It was just in the middle. But I'm definitely willing to give it another go. Um, I like that it looks kind of like a worn, like, like designs all over it. Um, and yeah, I just know that they're supposed to be witches. And it's got deckled edges, which is always a pro for me. A, an absorbing tale of love, sacrifice, family ties, and magic set in the Pacific Northwest during the aftermath of World War II. As I said last week or the week before, post-war stuff is kind of far more interesting to me than like during war stuff. We know what happens during war. It happens the same thing every time. Post-war is always just kind of a mixed bag of shit luck, okay? Whatever happens in the, the aftermath of all that stuff. I find that stuff more interesting. So I'm excited for that. I was waiting to see if this book will go on sale and I noticed that its price, original sale price was actually cheaper than I think the rest of the series was. And then my bookstore actually had a copy of it. And I was like, no, what? I think I was having a really rough day too. And I was like, no, what? Go be like, go do something for yourself. Go grab a coffee and pick up the third and I think final book 
in um, the, I think it's called the Athena Club series, Sinister Mystery of the Mesmerizing Girl by Theodora Goss. This is the sequel to A Strange, or an, The Alchemist's Daughter and The European Guide to Monstrous Gentlewoman, I think it's called. Um, the series is amazing. It takes all these literary characters that we've had in the past around the same time-ish of Sherlock E. Holmes, and it gives all of those characters um, female, like, offsprings, basically, and they're all, like, like just mental bonkers, like, scientists doing some absolutely, not even, like, ethically questionable, ethically, like, abominable things, and the girls are trying to stop that, and book two ended, like, <gasps> so I cannot wait to read this book, um, I can't wait to see what else, what else the author has come out, my friend also read, I think, her online poetry, and was like, girl, her poetry is amazing, uh, you need to look that up. And I was like, all right, I'll have to look that up. So yeah, it's just, I feel like the under dust jackets of this series is also like, they're kind of simple, but at least they're consistent. Um, but again, I'm paying $35 for a book. Like, couldn't you guys have like done something like gothic-y on the spines or something like that? I don't know. Maybe just, I could see like not this one though, because it didn't sell like ninth house Leigh Bardugo levels, but I'm so happy I own this. And I hope I think I want to binge the series, reread book one and two, and then read this one. I think maybe January or February. I also picked this up at Value Village. I'd never heard of it before, but I wanted to get one more because there was a deal. And the cover is so freaking adorable. The Night Parade by Catherine Tanquery. Um, it's, I had never heard of it. It has decent reviews on Goodreads though. The Under Dust Jacket is so pretty, like the purple, and then the big title uh, on the front and spine. Um, the design on the cover is actually really cute too. It reminds me of something but I can't figure out what. And if I look at it and I, I feel like I'm thinking something like Roald Dahl or Neil gaiman -y. Um So I don't, yeah. Uh, in the shadow of the forest the night parade marches on. It sounds like a little bit weird and wonky um, which is probably where Neil Gaiman is coming in. I have no idea when I'm going to read it but I, I have it and hopefully I can get to it in the next like six months or so. I think this was the last like buy from Value Village. Um, I picked up The Conspiracy of Us by Maggie Hall. I have almost gotten this book so many times off a of book outlet, like just an insane amount of times. And like, there's like secret society conspiracies. And I was like, that sounds cool, but there's a white girl in a dress on the cover. We know how we feel about that. But I felt I just bit the bullet at Value Village. It's again hardcover in absolutely perfect condition. It doesn't look like anyone actually opened it. Um, and it looks, I can't tell, every time I look at it, I can't tell if the spine is a teal or if it's like a silver and the silver is pulling colors from other, other places. It, it's been bothering me since I got since I got the book, honestly. But I know it's the start of a trilogy, the main character, 16-year-old Avery, um, and Secret Societies. That's just what I know. Everyone that I, the odd person I know that has read it, um, has liked it, so hopefully I enjoy it. Um, an ancient puzzle, a trail of clues, an unwanted destiny. That sounds like YA, just as a whole, so hopefully I enjoy it. I think right at the end of last month, but I had already uploaded my haul video, um, I got my copy of Don't Say a Word by Amberlynn Natush. Um, this is a sequel to Dare You to Lie. It's like a Veronica Mars heavy and influenced. This book veers off, I, I already read it, veers off quite drastically from the Veronica Mars plot that book one has, um, and I think I actually enjoyed it more. And I know the publisher didn't pick up the third book that she has, but she's going to self-publish it. So I'm going to watch for that. Hopefully I enjoy it. And yeah, Amberlynn is just an author I enjoy, and I would highly recommend picking up her Dairy Delight series. And lastly, I was waiting to pick this up until my copy of Supernova, which is pre-ordered and is literally sitting at my bookstore, but they're not allowed to give it to me till Tuesday because it's a hard release date because it's Marissa Meyer. Um, I was waiting to go pick this book up and for when I went to pick up Supernova. And then I got the email that was like, get a life Chloe Br or get a life Chloe Brown is here. And I was like, I didn't even know it shipped. I never got an email. And so when I was there, I picked up because they had it in stock. Book two of the Pages and Co series. Book one was Tilly and the Book Wanderers. I read that last December, I want to say, or January. It's adorable. It's su it's such a cute freaking middle grade. And then like, honestly, look at the freaking covers. And then, and then the end pages on this one have this like a little bit like snowflakey bees flowers pattern. And then the under dust jacket is has a design too on the hardcover just like book one. They did an amazing job. I also know since I read book one that the series was optioned to be a TV show. I don't know if that'll ever actually develop, but 
it'd be a, like a literary person's dream. I feel like it would be like the librarians or something like that. But um, I, I, I'm so happy I have it. I just, I use Plum Points to get it a little bit cheaper too. And it just, I'm so happy. It just, this is one book that I was like, I need to make sure I buy this year. It just like gives me so much joy because of the cover design and the book itself and just everything. So those are all the books that I managed to accumulate in the month of October. Um, I mean, I kept it to my one page on my little Inklings design planner and I still had some free spaces, but like I was not anticipating getting all the books that I did get. So um, I think November will actually be better. There's not nearly as many releases and I am saving for Christmas and I have a bunch of stuff on my wish list that I, I'm not, I put it on there. So I'm not going to go buy it and then end up with doubles or something like that. So uh, hopefully... I am more controlled and then December is probably going to be like a hot mess with gifts and everything like that. So yeah, uh, I will link all of these in the description box down below. I will also link all of my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you back.